uh, what we're trying to learn is um, what we're trying to learn is what does it look like to follow the holy, like to live a spirit-filled life, not just have spirit-filled meetings. Real easy to come into, like it doesn't cost you anything to come into the meeting where pastors are like, hey, let's go there, and then you rec- and you're blessed. God's good, he loves doing that, but it, for the purpose of, it's for the purpose of equipping you to live a life that's led by the Spirit. No, the Spirit. And so I'm like, oh no, who, who can we you know, get in to help us with that? And there's a couple of people. But top of mind for me was mum. <laughs> I was like, she's done such an amazing job. Uh, because, and what's, in, what's inspiring for me is that it's one thing coming out of a conference all revved up, it's so another thing having a life that's just clearly orientated around the Holy Spirit, just leading and guiding, and just being yielded and submitted to the things of the Spirit. So, you can have this mic. I'll give you the other one. Okay. Oh, sh- <laughs> big act to follow. <laughs> so, uh, I'm, I'm just going to interview Mum. I'm going to ask you some questions, just because we thought that would be a little bit more in line with how Mum kind of is. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, hopefully it'll be helpful. Mm-hmm. So, the first question I have, Mum, is when I was growing up, I had to eat everything on my plate, and like it was quite strict, and like then I went to Bible college, and I've been wanting to ask this for a long time actually, and then I came in, and remember Gabriel, my little sister, got a separate meal cooked for her. Um, can you help me understand what was going on in that moment? Because it was... Okay, well I felt led by the spirit. Oh. <laughs> Good answer. <laughs> I actually, I think, Sam, first child, I was really trying to do everything right. And when the fourth one came along, things got pretty late. <laughs> <laughs> and she turned out all right as well. Didn't and I think so you did too. Oh, okay, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> probably better though, eh? Like, yeah, I'm better. Yeah, okay. <laughs> it was those veggies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, how did you come to faith? Because I know that, like I've talked about my grandfather, your dad. Yeah. Who was an ama- who's actually led a huge, left a huge leg- legacy for us in terms of our family line. But he came to faith, and then we just know he started praying. But do you want to tell about how you came to faith? Yeah. So is there a little picture there um, of my family? Okay, so I just thought this would be quite nice. So this is 44 years ago, <laughs> and I'm 10 years old there. Um, and um, it's my father, my mother, and my grandmother. And I just thought, um, yeah, that that just shows for me the heritage that I actually have, that um, my nana was born in Scotland from the New Hebrides, and I think actually she was part of the, uh, there was a, a revival that happened there. And all my memory of nana is um, just reading her Bible with a magnifying glass and just, um, yeah, that, that's the memory I have of her and speaking Gaelic on the, on the telephone. Um, and then my father, um, who was in World War II, and I think Sam's probably shared about him and how, um, he, as best he knew how, he got down on his knees and asked the Lord to come into his life after he'd seen some of his friends killed that morning. And my mother, of course, who was um, part of, um, you know, she would have seen my nana and been part of that. So... I grew up and, and we went along to the Presbyterian Church and my dad was an elder there. And so I had a very kind of, um, I had a really lovely home uh, Christian upbringing. Um, and yes, yeah, so uh, I've got an older brother, Colin, who tragically you might have heard about as well. A lot of things get talked about here. Um, <laughs> there's a lot of things. <laughs> uh, and my younger brother, uh, Graham, who lives in Australia, who's also a Christian. But so I, you know, um, I, after I did, you know, school, I went to do my nursing training and I kind of, that was a time when I kind of left the nest in a sense. And so because there was no alcohol in our family, well, we weren't built up with that. So I was exposed to, through that, through that time, alcohol, drugs, and I did experiment with those. Sam probably says that I experienced, experienced them more than I actually did, but that's okay. Way better testimony <laughs> if you went real wild, but whatever. <laughs> I know, okay. So I was travelling overseas um, after I did my training. I'd been you know, about for three years. And then um, I got this phone call, and I was in Greece. And it was a phone call from Interpol. And they said that my mother had tragically died. <laughs> you never know, do you, when, you're gonna, when it's going to hit you. But, um, and so, yes, she had tragically died. My mother took her life. She committed suicide. And back then, you know, people talked about suicide. <laughs> it wasn't talked about. There was a lot of shame that went with that, a lot of shame. And I couldn't even 
come, that was a huge, huge shock for me. I had no idea. I did, my mother, after she had, my younger brother had postnatal depression, but my childhood was happy. I can't remember anything. And mum took lots of drugs. She had a lot of shock treatment, but I never expected this to happen. And so that shock left me reeling, le really reeling. And so if I just want to do the next slide. Because this is what the father, this is not just my father, this is what your father in heaven is like. This is what he does. And that's what my father did. He came up and he met me. He met me at the airport and he embraced me. And, you know, I've been, away, I've been selfish. I've been doing my own thing. And um, there's something about us loving people, no matter what they do, that we... <laughs> Sorry, I'm just, I don't know how we'll get through this, actually, Sam. You see, the old apple hasn't fallen far from the tree over here either. It's of emotional levels. Anyway, I'll, I'll try not drag this out. But so, so when I came home, I was incredibly open. I was just, oh, uh, in fact, you know, when someone dies and you're not sure, I'm thinking, where is she? Can she see me? Can she see my life? And do you know what? That was actually the conviction of the Holy Spirit that was coming on me. It was like the things in my life that weren't right. No one needs to point out things to each other about what's wrong in your life. I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit, if you love God, he will point those things out to you. He pointed them out to me. And so I was very open. And so I went along to this um, Christian conference. Actually, do you know what? This morning was a bit like a conference here for me. Your worship is amazing. You've got something really great going on here, guys. <laughs> And I met a friend of mine, and he'd just come to the Lord. And the last time I'd seen him, I will say this, he was stoned. He was out of it, okay? And I thought, oh, my God. And his life had changed. It had been turned around. So I, can I encourage you? He encouraged me to come to his church, and it was a Pentecostal church. It was fabulous. But can I can encourage you to bring your friends here? Because... There's life here. Jesus is here. His presence is here. I felt it this morning. It's here. So bring them. He took me along to that little Pentecostal church. And the pastor, well, he didn't pounce on me, but he certainly got me in a little corner and asked me where I was at with the Lord. And he led me in the sinner's prayer, which someone will put up. And I'm, I am ever, forever grateful to Pastor John Christie for, for coming alongside me and saying, have you actually asked him into your heart? Mm. And I did. Mm. And you can ask me the next question because then it rolls on for <laughs> well, me. <laughs> how did you get filled with the Spirit? <laughs> and so I was incredibly open, very open to, to when I'd seen people were full of joy and full of love, mm. I kind of like, wow, I want everything, everything that, that's been dished up here. And so they prayed for me for the power of the Holy Spirit to get baptised in the Holy Spirit. Mm. And it says in scripture, you know, that, he, um, uh, that he, he'll come and he'll clothe us with power from on high. He'll clothe us. Why does he clothe us? To go out. To go out and to preach the good news of Jesus Christ. So they prayed for me and the power of God came on me. Power. I felt this power just going through my body. But it wasn't just power, it was love. <laughs> this love, that's what it is. This, this, and I, do you know what I said? The same power that rose Jesus Christ from the dead. I believe in him. I believe in him. I believe that Jesus rose from the dead. How could I not? I felt it through my body. And then I went home that night, and I'd heard them doing all the stuff, and I thought, what is that? It was tongues. I didn't have any questions. A lot of people have questions. What is this? What are they doing? I was thinking, wow. <laughs> you know, you've experienced this amazing God who comes and cleanses you and touches you, and then there's this language that you can partake of. And so I just lay on my bed and I said, Lord, I, I, I want that language. I, I want that. And I just started speaking in tongues. And I'm, I'm very, very grateful because that was kind of like a foundational thing for me. So how did you, um, so you come to faith, um, you get filled with the Holy Spirit, but obviously where I'm, I'm really interested in just learning about how you just learn to cultivate a life that was beyond those, just those experiences. Yes. That's something, because, you know, for many years, you've been, you know, just pursuing that <laughs> stuff. So how did you cultivate a life that was just led by the Holy Spirit? I think that, uh, first of all, is our own devotional life with mm. Jesus and the Bible. Mm. We just want to hold the Bible up because the Word of God mm. is 
that's what speaks to us, that's what encourages us, that's what convicts us. And so for me, and, and we go up and down in our devotional life, let's all be honest, but that is pivotal to, to the life of the Spirit because it's actually the Word of God that speaks into our lives. And so uh, that would be one of the first things that, um, yeah, that to me is important. And the second thing is um, because I'd received the gift of tongues um, very early, you know, when I got converted, uh, that was such um, an amazing tool for me and so to be praying in the Spirit. And I've, I've, I've ebbed and waned over that, but, uh, but that has been one of the things that I've really learned, to be praying in the Spirit, because I think the more you pray in the Spirit, the, you get these little downloads of people or, or, or things that happen. So, um, And he says not only that, he says to keep on being filled. Mm. So I hope you all got filled this morning because actually we, we, we have to keep on being filled. Um, and when we're not, we're doing stuff in our own strength and it's exhausting, absolutely exhausting. So I'm learning and I'm still wanting to be filled more and more with his spirit. Mm. Keep fucking these pages, no. Sam. <laughs> um, and, and there's lots, I mean, you know, I'm, there's lots of things that you could say over 40 years. I'm thinking, Sam, wow, you know, this is a bit, bit, of, a, bit of a tall ask, actually. Um, but also keeping the things of the Holy Spirit and the gifts alive. Um, 1 Corinthians 14. Yeah, 1 Corinthians 14. Just to keep those alive. It says to pursue love, but to earnestly desire to prophesy. So we have to... Keep, we have to keep those things alive, and we have to keep like we've got to keep our own fire burning so that we can actually give it out to other people. Mm. And so, um, I, one of the things I did was, was I surrounded my people, I surrounded myself with people that loved the Holy Spirit, mm. who loved to prophesy, who loved chasing after those things of God. Mm. And it's like the company you keep mm. affects you. Mm. If you're with cynical people, you become cynical. If you become bitter. You'll hang. Oh, sorry, but you will start to hang out probably with some bitter people. You, you know, who you hang out with is actually very important in your in your journey. Um, and I I was fortunate in the fact that um, at that time, like when I came to Lord, there was a move of the Spirit, and there were lots of conferences on. And yes, we did get filled up in those conferences, and we did come home high, and we did lie on the floor for hours, wanting more and more of God. But <laughs> and and how we long for more of that. How we long for His presence. You know, it's His presence in our life that touches us and affects us. Um, but also, it involves taking risks. And I've taken a few of those. <laughs> uh, sometimes I've wanted the, the floor to open up, actually. <laughs> But I think we've taken risks in our lives. I look at Graydon, my lovely husband, over there. <laughs> and Being a handsome uh, man. <laughs> Ooh, done well. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so it's not just the promptings of the Spirit, it's also the leadings of God. And so in our life, um, Graydon, when he was 17, he, he heard the audible voice of God. Mm. I've never heard that. So, um, but it was to go into the Anglican church and it was to be because it was a mission field. It was to preach the gospel. It was to get people filled with the spirit. And when we, we went to South America, it was the same. It was this calling, this leading. That's, a, that's, that's obeying the promptings of the spirit. And I think you've shared, Sam, about getting people around who you talk to and, 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 and test those things. But also... Um, we did, ha we did see um, there was a move of God that came through when we were at St. Luke's and it was called the Toronto. It doesn't really matter what it is called, to be quite honest. It's just a move of God. And I, we'd come back from South America and I was quite dry. <laughs> and um, there was someone up the front and um, he said, you know, those who are hungry, come up and be, be filled. Mm. And I got touched by the Spirit of God. Mm but I got touched in a way that filled the whole church. Mm. And I was groaning and groaning and groaning and groaning. Do you know what that groaning was? It was the love of God. I'd never experienced, not, not the love, the heart of God. Mm. What's God's heart for Ukraine at the moment? Mm. What's his heart? Mm. It says that Jesus offered up our prayers and gro he offered those up to the Father. But that was, you know, and then you take a risk and then... 
I remember I kept, I'm always tried to reach out for words. I mean, we all try, but we get it wrong. And I remember one morning, because I thought it's good to hear one morning that you get it all wrong, you know. <laughs> well, we get it wrong a lot of the time. One morning I remember getting the scripture, and it was about, the, about the, um, Jesus saying about the man who had a withered hand. And I got the scripture, and I thought, oh, that's strange. I don't want to really speak that out, you know. And I didn't. I didn't speak it out. I just thought it just doesn't make sense. We were having a cup of tea afterwards and there was a guy that came to me and he literally had a withered hand. And I stood there and I thought, God, I did hear you. I did hear you. I didn't speak it out. I wasn't obedient. What did you want? I wonder what he want. I'm Sorry, to this day I don't know what he would have said to that man. But there was something about that man with the withered hand who had come as a visitor to our church that, that God had a word for um, and then there was another time that um, we went to a church. Um, to Graydon was doing a course on evangelism, and afterwards he said, um, "You know, would those people stand up who wanted to be have a fresh touch from God?" And I got up and I felt the power of God on me, and I just started praying and saying things and in tongues and then saying things in English and then I just went round and was praying for these people and there was this kind of like weird vibe going on in the place. <laughs> and afterwards I thought, oh, just let, could the floor open up please now so I can just disappear. Afterwards, someone wrote a book um, from that church and had said how um, someone had seen that and had struggled and I thought, yeah, I bet they did actually. And he prayed about it and he said that he said that when Annette was doing that, he saw the glory of God and angels touching people's lives with the fire. And you know, that's what I felt. I felt God wanted to touch people with this fire of God. And I thought, thank you, Father, that I went out there. <laughs> but what's more important is that I might have looked an idiot, but if people's lives are going to go out there and, 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 and touch other people's lives, then who am I to get so worried that I got it all wrong anyway? <laughs> Sorry, Sam, I'm raving no, on you're here. you're doing great. It's <laughs> very unlike you to rave on. I'm, I'm enjoying it. <laughs> um, John Wimber actually said, for God to look good, we've got to be prepared to look a bit foolish sometimes. And again, we're talking last week about that radical obedience that I think God's calling us back to. We've got very safe in the Western Church. Now we're going through lots of challenges, and it's time that we become fools for God again. I love that. Um, so during those times um, in South America, and I know that you got saved in a Pentecostal church and then married an Anglican vicar. <laughs> um, he knew how to level me out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, can't let it. Um, so tell us about how you navigated through those some of those dry times that you mentioned in South America. Um, some of those times where it felt um, like we all go through them, but like yeah. how did you how did you somehow wipe? Because I love because I feel like I'm just hearing wisdom this morning, and I'm like all of us like how can we learn the wisdom of a woman who's learned to live a life in the spirit? But so how did you learn to navigate those drier times, those disappointing times, those times where you're like, yeah, how did you navigate those okay. with, with some wisdom? First of all, I want to say that there's grace, mm. there's grace over our lives. Mm. This grace, um, there's probably some scriptures. Um, Ephesians 4, 7. Yeah, that um, God is a God of grace, and he does put grace over Sorry, our life. That one before, oh, Timothy 1, 9. He does put, um, yeah, he just puts this grace mm. over his life because of who he is. So you, you learn to know that actually you are weak, and the weaker you become, the better it is because then you have more of his grace, which he says is all sufficient. Mm. And so that is an over or that's an over thing that goes over our lives, this wonderful grace mm. that helps us actually through dry times, mm. through times when we've lost loved ones, through mm. there's just so much that happens in our life and overall there's this wonderful grace of God. And then, once again, it's our own personal devotional life. It's our own. And what I'd say here is that when things, when we don't have all these amazing experiences, we've got to dig our own wells. Mm. And so in South America, we were, where we were, we, you're on another language, another culture, 
And you can be that here in New Zealand. In fact, even at this time, you can be in that, that place, to be quite honest with all the things that are going on. But the, the overriding thing is digging into the Word of God, digging into your own relationship with God, digging your own wells into the wells of salvation. Mm. He's put this in us. And this, the Word of God, it's a living, active Word. It's our manna from heaven. It's, we cannot live without, without Him. And so that is one of the things for me that, um, yeah, I had, to, I had to dig those wells myself. I had to get into the Word. But even in that, you can still be in a dry place. And I can remember when we say, came back from South America, like I said before, you, in fact, when you get dry, you don't know how dry you are. So you honestly don't. Other people can see it. And I think, oh, and you get further, and you want to remove yourself from fellowship. You want to remove yourself from, from, you actually don't want to be around people who are really fired up with God. They're kind of like, oh, you know, even though you're walking with him. Um, so that, that's, um, but the prophetic, when we came back, um, I remember Bronnie rang me up and she said, you know, you should get Phil down to speak to your little ladies group. I was doing a Bible study and I really thought, I'm not in a good place to do this. <laughs> you know, I'd rather be doing a craft group. <laughs> um, and Phil came down and um, he, he prophesied over me to strengthen the things that remain. Yeah, there were some things that had really gone down. And that prophetic word started to, to bring life into me again. So, you know, though, that was one of the things that you get the paper going <laughs> Oh, and I've got to do declarations. <laughs> well, I remember this. I remember when you were going yeah, through God, you take tricky <laughs> times, I, you know, when I was old enough to kind of recognise what was going on, and you just had these declarations from the scriptures that you would just pray over your mind and over our family every day. And I remember you just doing that, and it wasn't, again, it was just a choice. I'm going to declare these truths over. Do you want to speak to some of that stuff that... Um, oh, okay. Yep. Ah, uh, yes, so that was... Um, isn't it great the way God puts different things in your life or different people? And I remember there was a, a couple and they talked about um, declarations and they had a book of declarations and just declaring the word of God. And, and because my mother had had these, you know, had had severe depression, um, I think I've shared here before, I, I certainly did not want to have to go down that track. And I certainly, I had a fear of that. So like actually when Sam was born, um, I was declaring God has not given me a spirit of fear but a power, love and a sound mind. I wanted a sound mind. And from that I learned a lot more, a lot more of the power of declaration. And, and recently I'm declaring health over my body as I get older. <laughs> Beloved, I pray that in all respects you may prosper and be in good health just as your soul prospers. I'm praying for my soul to prosper, that I am in good health and that I have the, the number of years that have been allotted to me soon. <laughs> Um, um, yeah, I think I've shared about uh, that whole sense of, um, yeah, what, what have I got here, Sam? Oh. Don't withdraw, keep pressing in, come on. <laughs> I think one of the things is to, like that whole thing of we're, we're meant to gather together, don't forsake gathering. Now, it seems strange because I was in an England chicken church and I had to go every Sunday. <sighs> Yeah, and do you know what? I'm grateful for that because, because actually I, there were many mornings when I would have thought, I don't want to go, and that's actually when we're not right. Yeah. You know, when we, and so I'm grateful that God put me there because I tell you what, I, would have, I probably would have been scooting out the doors many times. So can I encourage you that that is one thing. Don't withdraw from fellowship. Keep, keep being with one another. Keep encouraging one another. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about um, today and um, and just how you continue to just be spirit led. Like, tell us about how that looks for you at the moment, and what what's been so inspiring for me as your son, but also why I wanted to get you in is because, like, I don't I don't see you cooling down. <laughs> I see you I revving don't up. I want to cool down. <laughs> <We've> got, <laughs> we haven't got. I haven't got long to go. So I'm going to get him prepared. <laughs> but it, like, you know, it is inspiring because it's like. I've seen a lot of people go hard for a short time, mm. but I love that you're going hard for Jesus and you just keep going hard for Jesus. And mm. we've got a lot of saints like that in our church yeah. who just keep on pressing in and keep choosing the way of Jesus. But talk, talk about what the Lord's been saying to you recently and just how you're trying to just walk again and 
Uh, obedience okay. to the promptings of the Spirit. Okay. Uh, well, once again, it comes back to the whole word, like that whole discipline, I guess, because, um, yeah, we're not retired, but we're certainly in a different stage of life. And so um, I'm, I'm wanting that to be even more a priority. And um, recently I've just been, I've got several things that I'm doing uh, in that sense, but I do it a lot more. I've, I've always loved walking and love, we've got e-bikes, but any opportunity... <laughs> boomer bikes, I like to call them, <laughs> it's cool. I've got the boomer bikes. But every opportunity, I pray more and more in the spirit. So, um, Graydon doesn't know what's going on in the car, but there's a lot of, there's a lot of going on underneath, in trains, on bikes. Because I, so I've definitely, if I look at when I first started out, I wanted it far more time, and that's just a default. That's become a default for me. I just default into it. Um, and that then means that I find that people come across my path, things happen. Um, and recently I was walking down the beach and I've got a picture here of a seagull. <laughs> and I felt that God was saying to me in this season um, to catch the winds. You know, like when that seagull gets up into the wind, it just glides. So the grandkids, you know, they look at me now and think, oh, mum's looking at the seagulls. <laughs> But you can be do it. You've got to do it. Fl- you know, they do a lot of flapping to get up there. <laughs> but I don't want to be flapping anymore. I actually don't want to be flapping. I don't want any of you to be flapping. Like what Sam said this morning, let's catch the drafts. Let's catch the winds of the spirit. Let's, let's see what's he doing, what's he saying in people's lives. And so, um, yeah, that... And we're involved with one of the things that Graydon's got really involved in is evangelism. We're trying to encourage people to start sharing their faith and start leading people to Jesus Mm -hmm. because someone took me to church. Someone, Pastor John Christie, led me to Jesus. Mm -hmm. And so we're we're trying to do that. And um, and I'm a part of an intercession group, and I love doing that too, storming the heavens, being in the presence of God and praying for... So, yeah, just... Just keep being close to him, being close to him. What's Oh, praise and worship. Come on. <laughs> Come on, Beth. Praise and worship this year. <laughs> yeah, pra- and praise and worship is definitely, um, when, you, when you put him up and you look up and you keep worshipping him and praising him, you come into how he sees things. And that's the difference of when we're down here, but when we look up and we put who he is. So I listen to, I listen to a lot of... In fact, recently I've been listening... Now, some, none of you young ones will get this. I'm listening to Pat Boone. <laughs> See, there's only a few. <laughs> because... Hey, someone at the back. <laughs> because... Do you know what? I listened to those when I was a child. My dad used to play Pat Boone and all these hymns. And I've been listening to a lot of hymns and just those. And it just takes you into this wonderful presence of God. So I don't know what you're listening to. Or, but, but, and then you join in. You know, beautiful. That is definitely something that, yeah. There's actually, uh, we've talked about this before, but there is a journey of faith that people take when they, as they get to the point where mum and dad are, they call this thing, this whole thing of a new naivety. So it's like you've just come to faith, but you've got all the wisdom and experience and depth that you've accumulated over your life, but you actually come back to this new naivety and where you just, you, you come back to those things of your childhood and those songs. So I was, <laughs> I'm nowhere near there yet, but I was driving over to a retreat this week, had just the most beautiful retreat. And on the way, I'm like, where do I want to go? So I go Ron Canoli, sing out from the 90s. <laughs> and it's like, 
that album in my teenage years, just and it's still like tears in the car, listening to Ron Canoli, and it's cause it's like it's like it's from the start of my journey, and yet here I am still in the car worshiping him. And so, like, if you feel a bit dry again, why don't you just go back to the stuff where you first met Jesus? Find those CDs, find that Spotify playlist of that of Kevin Prosh or whatever, another go-to for me. And you just like it just reawakens something of that naivety you had when you first came to faith. And then you go through dry seasons and disappointment and pain. But there's something about that, that soft heart before the Lord, that hope that's in the Lord but it's gone through suffering, like Romans says in Romans 3, I think it is, um, that we rejoice through those trials because we don't, lose, we don't lose our hope. It's gone through suffering and yet he's still there. So tell us about, because I know you've got so many, which I love. Like we had Terry tell his story last week about, you know, amazing, just again, just open to be used by God. And I just know that there's stacks and stacks of stories you've got, Mum, about ways that you've just been obedient to little prompts and seen the kingdom of God break into lives and into situations. Do you want to share a little story about what's happened recently that will inspire us in terms of being led by the Spirit? Should I do a little one or a long one? (laughs) (laughs) Don't you know? (laughs) I know. You know how what buttons to push? The short one. (laughs) Did you cut it? No, no, go whatever. Do what you want, Uh, Mum. No. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I just know I know how pastors work. <laughs> um, need, yep, we're right. We're right. We're right. We're right. I can do it. Um, okay, so um, like I said, um, yeah, one of the things that uh, has been on Graydon's heart and in my heart is about the whole thing of evangelism. And so one morning we were in church, and there's this beautiful um, song from Lauren Daigle, mm. "Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus." Mm. And we were singing this song, and it says, um, Now go to a world that is dying. Mm. His perfect <laughs> salvation to tell. Mm. When that came up, I did this. I started crying mm. and I'm weeping. Mm. I was thinking, You're telling me, you're telling me to go to this world that's dying because I've forgotten to do that. Mm. I've been serving you, I've been doing these things, but there's a world out there that's dying. Mm. And I need to go out there. And the, the, the Spirit of God came on me and touched me. Mm. And so, um, and then actually after that I had a few dreams. God speaks to me in dreams. And it was like this was a part that I'd neglected. Mm. And he was, he was breathing on it again for me to, to start sharing about Jesus. And so we live at Pika Pika Beach where Sam comes and hangs out and says nothing when he comes and arrives and then starts to talk after he's been there. <laughs> Sorry. It's my place of rehab. We'll move from... <laughs> Um, and we have a lovely neighbor. Oh my gosh, this is terrible. We have a lovely neighborhood there, and we um, we invite our neighbors around uh, for c- a couple of times a year for c- c- scones and stuff. So I know all the neighbors there. And there's one lady, Vern, who uh, lives down the road from us. And I've had lots of conversations with her. Um, and she shared one one day she was just sitting outside and said, "Come over here," and you know she was telling me all what's happening in our family. And and so I just said, "Oh, you know, Vern, can I just pray for you?" I didn't. So I prayed for her and um, she was crying and we had this moment. And then, so often she'd come and chat to me and she said, you know, she had a counsellor and I was her counsellor, which isn't the truth, but I was actually just someone who listened to her. Mm. But actually last year um, she had a, um, she was very, very sick. She had an ulcer, a a gastric ulcer, which uh, burst. So she was in hospital, she was in ICU, she she nearly died several times. And she was in hospital for six months, actually. And so I thought, I need to go and visit her. Well, I was going to visit her anyway. But I also need to lead her to Jesus. I can pray for her. Yeah, we can all pray for one another. But it's that next step. And so uh, I think Jim might have shared about this, actually. So I went up to the hospital and I went with Bron. And Bron said, you're going to do it. You're going to do it. (laughs) You're going to do it. What about you? (laughs) So we had this. And she kept looking at me. You're going to do it. So, but she was so open, um, so when she talked about what had happened to her, and then I just very briefly, very briefly, not like what had happened to me, how I'd experienced God's love, what had happened, very, and she just said, really, and I said, would you like to know this Jesus? Mm. It was very, very simple, and she said, yes, she grabbed my hand, yes. So I, le- I don't even know what the prayer was I prayed. I'm not joking. It, was like, it wasn't like Pastor Christie's. I'm telling you, it wasn't like Pastor Christie's. <laughs> but, but I prayed, and she repeated it after me. 
and she asked Jesus into her heart. And afterwards she said to me, oh my gosh, wow. She saw this bright white light. White light. And she said, I'm surrounded by angels. You know, this, this is the salvation of her soul. And now recently, um, that's, that's her there. <laughs> and recently she's now got cancer of the stomach. And so um, the other day we were prompted, well not prompted, you don't even need to be prompted to go and visit people in hospital, let's get that straight, just go and visit them. <laughs> um, and I had the, once again, we were in there and she was very real and I, I said to her, you know, she was talking about that she's now going to die. And so I said to her, do you remember what happened, Vern? And she said, yes, I do. I do remember what happened. And I said, can I pray for you? And she just grabbed my hand. <laughs> she said, yes, please, Annette, please. What is the wonder of that? And how did that happen? Do you know, it's not just her journey. It's my journey. God prompted me. He didn't prompt me. He actually came and said, you need to start sharing, you need to get asking, telling them about Jesus. And so I know that Bern, you know, same dress, guys. <laughs> I was going to say, Mum, that seems to be a fairly, it's a lovely dress. Burn's, yeah, so be <laughs> oh, Burn's 70 and I'm 69, pretty close. It's very close. <laughs> but I know, and, and she knows, she knows that while she has to get through this physical life, she knows there's another life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah.